Back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. That's a smart man. Wow. Oh, I'm not going to lie. Smart man. I got a neighbor, uh, t- plus 29, South Sudan. <laughs> a neighbor? Not me, just a neighbor. South Sudan, plus 29. His last name in with Tay? They almost won last time. Huh? They almost won last time. Yeah, I know, which is why I think they're going to get obliterated this Play time. Play Jason Tatum, Kerr. <laughs> the world is so mad. You know what? I don't even I care. Like, no. Forget but, Jason Tatum. But you did keep it real yesterday. I said, if you were Tatum, would that have bothered no, you? No, I'd be pissed. I'd be pissed. Would but you really? Yeah, of course. I want to get in the, I didn't come to Paris just to sightsee. <laughs> and I, you're playing my teammate who I like. I'm not Tyrese Halliburton. But you forgot about me? I'm sorry. Did I just win an NBA championship? Yeah, did you I just did. get the richest contract you in did. the history of basketball just to get a DMP coach's decision? Check, check, check. I don't think so. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, no, America's going to wax it in. Yeah. You can, we you hope. Put that in the cap. Yeah. All right. Evan Giddings in for Matt Steinmetz. Again, he's out in London. He'll be back next week. Daryl the Guru Johnson with you all week, as always, here on 95.7 The Game. And, you know, again, it's kind of just following the Giants, in my opinion, lifeless trade deadline, really lifeless July 30th. You know, Man. even going back to the 29th, you know, trading Solaire, trading Cobb, not doing much else at the deadline, you know, going to get Mark Canna. Uh, who I do like. I mean, I think I'm Mark, Mark Canna used to be a, a very good player. Yeah, I'm not sure he is much anymore. But they, I think we've seen the last of Flores because he's hurt in a giant uniform. That that very well may be his replacement, Evan. So I, I'm like, I'm not mad at Canna for that. And and I do want to get to this sound in a moment. You know, and again, your payoff tease. Oh about, yeah, oh yeah what you saw. Yeah, that's true. Uh, speaking of. Doval starts with a D. I think that's the grade that I would give their trade deadline, the wow. San Francisco Giants. I, would, I wouldn't give them an F uh, because technically they did accomplish a couple of things. We'll see if that ends up paying off, but I would give it a D. I mean, here's basically what they did yesterday, the Giants, in addition to losing 5-2 to two and giving up four home runs to the Oakland Athletics. <sighs> uh, they minimized their future financial commitments. They didn't hurt, but they also didn't help their postseason chances. And I think this is probably the most damning part, speaking of D, is put they, they put faith in players who to this point haven't earned it. Wow. You know, they, they, they have put faith in the guys that have gotten them, gotten them to this point, which has produced a team that's three games below 500. So that's what they quote-unquote accomplished at the deadline. They saved some money. They didn't hurt their postseason chances. Or they didn't, they didn't change them drastically one way or the other. And they basically doubled down on players that have gotten them to this point. To Farhan's point, the players will dictate the rest of the season for us. Well, I guess he's a man of his word because they are. And it doesn't look like it's going in the right direction. Wow. And you know what? You should have, We should have saw this coming, Evan, right before you left for your vacay when he basically said, it's on the players. Like, that was odd. And I'm not saying he was right or wrong, but when I heard that, I was like, oh, boy. I was disappointed because that's coming from a guy that's got security that a lot of people think he does not have. So when this season is over, regardless if it culminates with a playoff berth or not, Evan, I believe Farhan Zaidi will be your baseball uh, president of baseball operations going into next year, man. It's just, I just think about that. Who, who, I can't even think of a name, a woman or a man that's called in and said, this dude deserves to keep going. Like, when is enough enough? And what it sends from the faceless ownership, because that's what I call them, is there's no accountability. And as a fan, that's all you want. That's all you want, Evan, is to believe, you know what, not one or two years, not three, but when you get to six or seven of futility and failure and and a guy that finally said yes to you and could hit 30 home runs because – let me remind you, the Giants haven't had a guy hit 30 home runs since Barry Bonds. Damn. Just think about that. Brent 30 Ru- home runs. Your boy's got 12, I mean 26. <laughs> Brent Rooker just hit his 26th Come last on, night. Come man. What are we doing? You can't identify power? Oh, boy. Well, they tried. And yeah, and you're jetsing them with the, the what, third of the season left. They identified solar power. They didn't know Jack the Clark, <laughs> Daryl Evans, Kevin Mitchell, Jeff Kent, Bonds. Can I keep helping me? You, oh my gosh! And what? you can't get a dude in here with thirty jacks. No, and that, that, that ain't just a Farhan problem either. I mean, no one's been able to do it since a guy who 
has to hit the most home runs in the history of baseball. Chili Davis! Are you serious? <laughs> He's the last homegrown that's hit it, that's done it. Yeah, exactly. Look, they, they went out to get solar power this, this summer. That's yeah, or this off season. I've never heard that well, yeah, they ended up with an LED light. Like seriously, I mean, they they got they got oh, nothing out of it. Jump up with it. They got nothing Solar from it. power. They tried to find it, but it wasn't there. Or well, the sun wasn't very big. But but that's why you know again we're talking about sort of the the redundancy of irrelevancy <sighs> for Farhan Zaidi, right? And that's why I think some of these questions from his press press conference yesterday. I mean, you could just recycle them, whether it was last year. Or next year, okay, so, hey, Farhan, you know, where, where is this team after six years? I know you get to this time of year, and frankly, whenever you're a little bit on the com- com- competing bubble like we are, we're, you know, three games out uh, in the wild card race. Bubble. There's a notion of, you know, let's, let's just make, tr- let's sell, and let's enhance the farm system. But, you know, you can have all the prospects you want, it's not going to matter until you actually create opportunities for them, right? So you can go out and get a bunch of guys, but if you're not willing to do some of the things we did over the last couple of days to create opportunities for those guys, it's just not going to have a chance to impact your major league team. So, you know, really to answer your question, I would say I think what fans want to see, I think what we can hang our hat on as an organization is the progress of of young players coming up and impacting us. And I, I named three guys, and that's not including – you know, guys like Eric Miller and Brett Wisely that were acquired into this organization, but are young players who have a chance to be here for a long time. So the more of that, you know, the more we have guys coming up, establishing themselves, you know, like a Pat Bailey did last year, I think that's that's where the progress is coming from. But isn't that all about, okay, if I can just kind of parse his words a bit. So he said that they want to hang their hat on the young players. And let's just leave the you know the best rotation in, in baseball out of it. From that statement, he said Zaidi did they they hang their hat on you know, their young players, right? You mm-hmm. know, I, I, Bailey's a success. Uh, Ramos is obviously a success. I think Harrison, though he hasn't been you know to the level of those other two players, he's yeah. yeah he's been good. I mean, Kyle Harrison has made 18 starts this year. He's got a sub four ERA. He's been good this year. Birdsong, I would consider a win for them in the in the youth department. Like yes. But he also said that we're not going to just sell to grab a horde of prospects because you need opportunity, right? You need a pathway for those prospects. But then a few sentences later, he said that we've our, our priority is, is clearing a pathway. So it, like it, he's he's going in circles. It, it, they, at least that's what I hear. He, they want to prioritize younger players, but they don't want to acquire more of them because. There's a stopgap in some places, but not in others. But I, I don't really know how you're going to find out if you have any potential in these young players unless you empower them. Yeah, man, Evan, I agree. But also what's confusing and baffling about that is, hey, Farhan, don't you dare act like you set out from spring training. We're just going to run with the young guys. Then that makes sense. But why that sounds like mumbo jumbo is the fact that you went and got OGs to, to you know, you went and spent two hundred million on older players, and that's that's where the disconnect is. He's talking from a premise of we're just going to run the youngsters out there and and watch them grow, and that's who the twenty twenty four Giants are going to be. Nah, bud, that's part of it. Talk about the other failures. And guys that you just got out of here, including Solaire, pulling the plug on him. Uh, before a full year. So it doesn't match, Evan. It just, he's just mumbo jumbo. So there's hitting leadoff, by the way, for the Braves. No. <laughs> Don't you think that's kind of funny? That's just, so watch the, him just go on a binge. Well, but that also tells me that it it wasn't Melvin's choice. It might not have been even Farhan's. Say it means like Solaire wanted to hit leadoff. That's why the Braves yeah. brought him in, apparently. 888 957 9570 is the number. Evan Infersteine with Goo. Uh, trying to figure out again, like what what has changed? Seriously, like where is this team after six years? That was what was asked to him, and Zaidi emphasized the youth movement. I think the younger players are in a better position than they were six years ago. He's right about that, but six years is a long time to finally be seeing some fruit. Like that's a long time that those seeds have been stuck in the ground, and I know there was a pandemic and so maybe got pushed back, but still. 
five or six seasons, that's a long, long time to just see wow. now the promise of players who could help you in the man, future, man. but right now can't even help you get above 500. And you said it at the beginning of the show, Evan. Let's not act, and I don't, I'm doing this now because I will say this about Kerr, who I love, but he lucked out with Moody and Kaminga because he almost had to go to him in necessity. And that's what Farron had to do here with the Giants. You know, it was never, we're going to empower you, Evan. Here it is. We're going to give you such amount of time and games. Show us what you got. It was always by default or injury. And that's what the, you know, minor leagues are for. But miss me with, oh, we saw something in Evan and we called him up. And that, you guys yanked your boy's chain, Ramos. And to his credit, he was still able to stay on stride and do what he did, you, he did and turn that first half into an all-star. But I could say that you mind, you know what, uh, Matos into what he's doing right now because you were yanking his chain. And the same goes with um, who's the one that uh, Luciano. Like, you know, you guys botched that. So Farhan, you could I, – I think he, he – I think he thinks the words coming out of his mouth are poetry, but really you're just talking in circles. K got in my ear. It sounded like he was doing a freestyle rap. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you got like, what word can I, you know? And it's just, it ain't smooth at all. At all and either has your tenure. And no, the only people defending Farhan right now are the ones that work for the Giants and know they need that check. I get that. And I'm listening because you know I love me some announcers. They're wearing it too. And some I appreciate and reporters are keeping it 100 by saying what they're watching and what they're commentating is not good enough. And you can just listen to a giant broadcast. Radio, TV, it's wearing on them, Evan. And I appreciate that they're not ducking and telling me it's Halle Berry when it's really Molly Ringwald. You know what I mean? Molly Ringwald. Well, actress in Breakfast Club. Breakfast Club? Oh, yeah. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> that one took yeah, a minute. Yeah, yeah, I'm a little older. Than you. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Kay, like, oh, boy. A oh, Molly Ringwald. Oh, my God. No, she, no, she was a looker. Yeah. But this is the other part, too. It's like, okay, so six years. Good God. It's a long time. We didn't know each other six years no, ago. No, we did not, E. Yeah, so 20, 2018. Yeah, so I would have been, oh, boy. A couple years out of college. I'd have been 30. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you laughed a little too hard. Ian. I'm, I'm in the 303 now. No, I know. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, that's coming up. We are going to get to that in a moment. My boy just spit out. Like, that's <laughs> Sorry. <fun>. Whoa. <laughs> oh, yeah. preview the cafeteria. <laughs> no, I, I think that, look, six years, it's a it's a long time to be sort of stuck in this, in this cycle. And if you are going to hang your hat, like, that's why I wonder at the end of this year, you know, what is the sell? I saw a lot of sell shirts last night at Oracle Park. Uh, they're talking about selling the A's. But what is Farhan's sell? If Farhan is to try to keep his job, if Farhan is to continue to run this operation, what is he going to sell? Because it sounded like yesterday he was selling, not giving up wholly on the season, but not really investing much, like not mortgaging any part of your future to invest in this season. Just kind of writing it out. Yeah. You know, just just taking the, the soft wave in. But also selling the young players. Well, it what if those young players don't don't work out? You know, some of them are going to be good. Just probability. Some of them are not going to be good. But it can't just be those guys. That that's why the the offseason choice to spend so much money I felt like was originally a bit of an indictment on your farm system. No, but because if you really did have those promising prospects that were coming up, well, then you wouldn't have gone out and spent so much money to fill those holes. Like, you know, Farhan, again, in that clip, he just talked about you need opportunity for these young players. You need a pathway. Well, naturally, if you go and sign Chapman and you sign, I mean, Lee is a little bit younger, but you sign Lee, um, you keep Conforto, you have Yaz, you have these veterans on your roster. Well, then they're, 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 there's no room for for Matos and Ramos, and those right. players have only emerged because of injuries. So it just feels again to your point, Goo. Yesterday, we're like they've pivoted in four months. They've gone from all in to all out to all in next year. 
And and I'm not really sure who they believe in on this team. Right. And that's why I believe Solaire flew out to right field in this first at bat. But <laughs> I'll tell you this, Evan. That's why I think he is not under pressure or is going to get fired. Somebody is allowing him to do this or continue to do this. And you're right. You said it, man. You said it so so well in regard to why would you go spend on I'll just we'll call him the OGs. And like you said, Lee is not 50, but you didn't go all in with the youngsters. You didn't say this is the direction we're going. There might be some turbulence or whatnot, growing pains. You went and spent like you knew you had action, Evan, and you got bailed out by Ramos in that first half. You know what I mean? So you got bailed out by Birdsong and his spot starts. But how I, I'm just looking at this team, and D. Lou put it on the uh, YouTube chat or help me out, Evan. The Giants stink, and that's what they do. I, I feel <laughs> well, like Steiny. Well. I feel like Steiny. They stink right now, and they're, I'm never going to sit here and, and I'm waiting on FP and Dibs. And uh, they were stinky last night. And our and our guy um, Grandy, Grandy, yeah, Grandy, yeah, about what I heard yesterday. But I think Grandy would agree with you. No, I. But they jumped him yesterday, so I'm gonna help him out. But I'm just telling you, Evan. Who who's well, excited about what it is? What? It was verbal job, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Same prison. Yeah. Dibs didn't throw up a life preserver at all. Is the, is the like, fresh, who's the, what are you going to be happy about right now? Meat. What am I going to be happy oh, about right I'll now? I'll tell you. What? That's New City Connects, the Dave Fleming oh, told Bonte and Chatsky. They're gonna, he had seen them, oh. but they got a new edition coming next year. Oh, I thank, was in the car like, yeah. Thank God. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the Giants got something new coming their way. But the, the other thing, too, is, okay, so you, you spoke about you know, some of the broadcasters are the, the only people that basically have confidence in Farhan publicly would be people close to the team. Okay. All right. I, I think there was a lot of that up until, say, the last month of the season last year with Gabe Kapler. Remember, we started to hear about all the reports coming out of the clubhouse. The walk with Webb in the LA. The Pasoy problem. Yeah, the Pasoy problem. <laughs> the Pasoy problem in the clubhouse. There was a lot of those things that it kind of leaked out. And then it became clear that. This guy, ooh, he, he was not going to be able to keep his job. I don't think we've gotten to that point yet, but give you a, a subpar month of baseball in August, and again, the calendar turns tomorrow, but if there's a subpar month of August and the September schedule, which looks very difficult, you're wow, playing a lot of playoff okay, teams, okay. I do think we might hear more of that noise. Right now, we're, we're you know, I think people just want the guy gone, but... It does feel like publicly people are he still has people in his corner. And you For very well, no, I, I get it, but Evan is bigger than, you know, these last two months to me. It's it's what have you built? What do you got your fan base excited about? And outside of the what was it, twenty twenty one season where they won one oh seven, yeah. Um, it's been nothing there. So I'll leave that there. But I do wonder, I really do, when I think about the Giants, where does Melvin fit in all this? I'm not saying he deserves to be fired. I know he got, you know, he let go, he left San Diego and he got a gig. I get that. But, Evan, the more I watch Giants play, man, I just wonder, is he the guy to lead him into the next trek of of uh, meaningful baseball? Well, I can tell you what, I, I don't think this is the vision that Bob Melvin was sold. Like, seriously, if, if you're at the beginning of the season, you're coming over mm-hmm. from San Diego, which he probably left only in the first place because he did not get along with A.J. Prell. Got you. And just didn't get along with the, the organization. He wanted to get out of there. But s- seriously, like, how far away is the vision that was sold to Bob Melvin to what he has now? I think that's why people have, have also, you know, thrown some criticism his way, and he's probably deserved of some. His team's not very good. But I, I just, at least for right now, you know, I, I I can't place most of the blame at his feet because I'm not really sure what he's supposed to do. Again, you look at the lineup yesterday, and Fitzgerald's hitting leadoff because he's your hottest hitter. It just feels like Bob Melvin has to ride, you know, three or four hot hands because he doesn't have one or two that he can rely on. And the one that was supposed to be your middle of the order bat, you just shipped to Atlanta. So... I think he's out of options when it comes to trying to get the most out of his offense. And that's that's my really my biggest concern for the rest of the season. You can ride your starting pitching as long you know the starting pitching could be great the rest of the way. Final 2 months they could be awesome. If a Giants opponent scores the number we saw last night, number 5. 
I don't think they're going to win very many games. And that that that's a, a boy. You, you know, can't score five runs. You're you're done. You can't win consistently. Yeah. Tell him, LeBron. And Evan, tell me if I'm doing too much. I'm honing in on the play last night. So do you think that was Melvin's gut? Because when I hear the word gut, well, I don't think about me. Uh, Bruce Bochy, who was so well, um, one of the best to ever do it, he managed with his gut. Do you think the computer, or was that Melvin saying, hey, Lamont Wade Jr., he hadn't had it a bat all night. Go up there and hit. Or... What Farhan was telling the world was it's about the Lucianos and making a way for their future. Why would you rob Luciano of that opportunity? What was that? Do you think that was Melvin? Do you think that was sort of the computer? I don't know, but I, ha- I hate I have those questions. And I know people are out there. It was just wanted bad. But it was also an indictment on everything you guys keep. It's like you're bipolar. You say one thing, but you do another. Luciano should have got that at bat if you're asking me last night, uh, uh, Evan. Well, let's take that at bat because I think if you are prioritizing to Farhan's words, young guys, development, prospects, well, that's a great prospective situation. H- Hello? You know, that, that's, that's a perfect opportunity for a young guy to get a big at bat in a big moment in a big spot and try and do something with it. But if, if you're going to ask me why they why he did it, well, it's, it, you know, I think it's it's simple. It's Tyler Ferguson's a righty. Lamont, you have him on the bench for that situation. You're going to go left on right as opposed to right on right. But that's where, again, there's there's a disconnect. Okay, so are we trying to win games or are we trying to develop? Because it feels like they're trying to do both. And in trying to do both, they've, as we've seen, they've gotten nowhere. Right. And if Luciano's a top prospect and you're telling me early on, I got to sit him if a lefty or righty is out there, that's already an indictment. I thought his bat was his bat, Evan. That's already telling me, okay, brother got to work it out. Like, he should have went up there and been empowered. Go be you. Take advantage of the situation in the trade that we made where we gave away somebody that had way more power than you had done it, and we cleared the way for you. Oh, but because there's a righty or lefty on the bump, you got to come back? That is weak. That just sounds weak. A little bit. I'll tell you what's not weak, though. This three-on-three tournament yeah. we got coming up, too. I can't wait. Although, I haven't picked up a basketball in, like, months, dude. I swear to God. If I'm going to get out on this court, I, I got to go get some. <laughs> you got handles, E? Uh, I'm trying to picture you out. The Shasky got handled. I'm, sure, oh, <laughs> sure, I got handled. I love it. I also wink, wink. Got a jump shot. Uh, I'm also six foot five. Okay, the Hoop It Up three on three basketball tournament is returning to Thrive City for its second year on Sunday, August 11th, from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. 95.7. The game is putting a team in the tournament. And we're paying for registration for three listener teams as well. That contest will be this Friday at noon. Again, the Hoop It Up tournament is established and owned by KG. Uh, What's it? Nothing easy. And includes recreational divisions from ages 8 to 18 and up, as well as adult divisions at all levels. Each team has a lot of max of five players with three players on the court and up to two subs. I'll be coming off the bench. For all details, go to hoopitup.com backslash San Francisco. If you think you can beat our team, I got an idea of who will be on it. We can reveal that later in the week, uh, but I'll let you guess for now. If you think you can beat our team, make sure you're listening this Friday at noon. We're giving away three free entry, three free entries to the tournament. If you win, you'll be able to field your own three-on-three team and take on the competition. I also, again, I, I think we just we got to get into one of the reasons why I also want to dig deeper into this press conference scoop from yesterday is yeah. number one, it's important, but number two. I'm not sure how many people were able to actually listen to a ton of it because it wasn't publicly available and it that wasn't was promoted. It wasn't thrown in people's faces. And I don't know about you, but I would want to hear from my president of baseball operations if he's speaking about the direction of the franchise I root for. Yeah, Ken and I talked if this were New York, Dallas, Philly, Boston, that bad boy would be live. And then, Evan, there would be a a, a reaction to it, a post-game press or a panel on what you heard. That was strange. And that's what's coming up on the game, presented by Fremont Bank, celebrating 60 years of full-service banking with no compromises. That segment also brought to you by Express Employment Professionals. And we got a Pasoy problem in the clubhouse.